What's going on everybody? This is Andrew from Saltbound. So it's the end of May and that means that American Red Snapper season is coming up for us down here in Florida. It also means grouper season is coming in. I was luckily invited by one of my buddies at work who has a really nice, really big ass boat to go offshore. And I am getting everything put together right now. So I figured I would take a minute and I would show you all the rigs that I'm getting ready to use uh, when we go out, we're going out on the 31st, we're going out the day before, we're going to do some prospect fishing. Um, and then at midnight on the 1st, we're going to roll right into the American Red Snapper season. So we'll go ahead and we'll start uh, fishing and keeping keeping our limited Red Snapper, Gag Grouper, that kind of thing. Um, now, I grew up fishing on the Panhandle, so it was, you know, Grouper, Red Snapper, Tuna. And that was back in the day before these heavy federal regulations. Um, I remember my dad going out, coming back with, I mean, coolers and coolers of American Red Snapper, grouper, that kind of thing. And uh, I know the restrictions have helped a lot, but the three-day season, it really does put a lot of pressure for the recreational ang angler to go out there, uh, especially for those of us who only have the chance to fish federal water. Down where we're at in Tampa, we don't have them close like they do in the Panhandle. So, you know, in order to go out and actually target these fish, you're talking about a 30 you know, uh, between a, a 25 and 30 mile run, which is, I mean, that, that's a, a good run offshore down here, especially with the unpredictability of the weather. Um, what I'm going to do this year though, is something that I'm kind of excited about. I have fished for snapper and grouper a lot growing up. I've, I fish for them here in the bay. And uh, what I'm going to do this year is something I'm really excited about. I am going to do vertical jigging for red snapper. So the setup that I have and the setup that I'm going to use, I just wanted to give you a, a quick look at. It is a uh, it's a Tiger Light by Ugly Stick. This is the jigging rod. This is six six. Now this is their uh, is it the medium? It says it's the medium, but uh, it's rated for 50 to 100 pound braided line and a four ounce to seven ounce lure. Um, all the jigs that I got are, are within that range. I think I've got a couple that are three. So the water that we're gonna be fishing is anywhere between, we're saying 90 to 150 feet. Um, now the reel that I have on this rod, this is a Pen Pursuit 2. It's got 20 or so pounds of uh, pounds of drag. I've got a buttload of braid on this thing. I've probably got 400 yards of braid. I've got 40 pound cast king braid on here. I've been using that stuff now for going on eight months. You can't beat it, especially for the price point. I haven't had any problems with separation or anything like that. It's just like any other braid. You're going to get a little bit of bleeding the first couple times you take it out, but after that it stops. Um, now what I have on top of the braid for when you, when you do jig, you want to put a mono top shot on. Now it doesn't have to be a lot. It can be a, a shorter top shot. I want to say I've got about 65 yards on here, but what I have is bull buster mono. So I have that connected to the braid with a blood knot. So it's a pretty strong knot. It, it works out pretty well for me. It goes through the eyes really well. So especially when you're dropping and jigging and bringing it back up. And I've attached the uh, the butterfly jig. I don't know if you can see that. That is just an improved clench knot. And uh, that's, that's going to be my go-to for red snapper. Now I'm pretty sure that once everything fires off and everybody's getting them on cut bait and live bait, Hopefully I'll have my limit off of this. That would be super, super gratifying for me toting all this extra gear out there. Um, if that doesn't work, then I'm going to swap over and do some bottom fishing. So let me show you the bottom rig that I'm gonna use once we get out there. Give me just a second. All right, so the bottom rig that I'm going to be using, this is an older rod. I've had it for, I don't know, going on six years now, but the reel I've had forever. This is an old pen GT2. This is the high speed. This thing has a ton of drag. I use it for alligator hunting. I use it for snagging. I've got it loaded up with 150 pound Power Pro. So I'm gonna do a top shot of 40 pound Bull Buster on top of this as well. And I've got just a, a fish finding rig on it right now. I was using this the other day when I was mangrove snapper fishing out in the bay. 
and I'm gonna do the top shot on there. We're going reef fishing. I don't wanna burn through a bunch of Power Pro. Power Pro is expensive, especially the 150 pound stuff. Um, the, the Power Pro I've had on here, I've had on here for three years. I bought it for alligator hunting and uh, it's lasted. It's because I put a top shot of mono on it every year before I go grouper fishing so it doesn't get, get eaten up. Um, the rod that it's on, this is an ugly stick charter boat rod. And yes, if you look, that's a red snapper. This rod is amazing. I've used it to catch grouper. I've used it to catch mangrove snapper, cobia. I mean, it has had its butt handed to it, but it works. And like I said, it is a ugly rod, but it really does get the job done. And whenever I run offshore and I bottom fish, I always bring a secondary bottom rod. I've been lucky. I haven't had any rods of mine get broken but I have seen rods get broken, especially with big amberjack. So the secondary rod that I'm gonna bring, is one of my favorite rods that I use for trolling for Spanish and for Kings. It's a longer rod. It's a seven foot pen power stick. Um, this is a medium action rod, seven foot. It's got a pretty light tip. I've got it paired up with a Penn Jigmaster 500. Now I have doubled the drag in this, so I'm getting about 25 pounds of drag out of this thing. And I've got a bunch of braid underneath this mono. So I've got about 400 yards of braid underneath this mono. It's the Cast King 40 pound braid. And I've got it top shot with about 100 yards of the Bull Buster 40, 40 pound mono. Um, it is the blue mono where we're going. The water's really clear, so it should blend in really well. And I've got it set up with just a fish finder rig, and that's a big six aught inline circle hook. So remember, if you are going out for the American Red Snapper season and you're fishing in the Gulf of Mexico, circle hooks are required if you are reef fishing. Um, check the regulations. Make sure you know what you're getting into before you go out there. You're also required to have a D hooker. That could be a pair of pliers or it could be an ACE D hooker. I'm bringing them both. Just in case the man rolls up, you want to make sure that you're properly equipped. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Once I get to 150 subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway. So make sure if you subscribe, you have an account. And if you really like the video, go find me on Facebook. It's under Saltbound.